Now then, our special guest this morning. Put them together for psychologist Oliver James. Yay! Welcome back, sir. Welcome back. Now, Oliver has been examining the nation's mental well-being, or perhaps lack of it, for more than 25 years now, with books like Affluenza and Britain on the Couch. And now he's turned his attention to one of our favourite subjects, parenting skills. With this, and I have to uh, announce it carefully, how not to F them up. A little uh, play on Philip Larkin's poem. <laughs> now, <laughs> you really have made my life a nightmare in daytime TV. In it, you divide mums into three categories. Yes, well, there's, uh, there's the organiser who likes to get routines, who likes to, you know, get the child to adapt to her. There's the hugger who very much adapts to the child, and then there's the flexi mum, who's a kind of mixture of the two. But what the book is mostly about is not, it's not kind of a book that tells you how to look after your children. It's very much a book about how to get into the zone, how to get really comfortable with in your skin, to be really happy being a mother. Because an awful lot of the mothers, I interviewed about 50 mothers for the book, and there's a lot of science in it, but mainly I interview mothers and it's mainly the stories of mothers. It's a bit like being in an NCT group reading the book, basically. Gosh! You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's my idea of a living hell. Now, the, the book, I, I think I can tell you, has upset some parents who feel that Oliver has criticised working mums. Yes, well, this is a complete myth. I mean, I, I, you know, the book is completely in favour of women working if they want to. Uh, the, the only controversial thing I'm saying is really that it, the important thing is to get adequate substitute care. But, you know, the worst thing is just as bad for a, mother, for a baby from the point of view of the needs of meeting an under three-year-old. Uh, if the mother stays at home and gets depressed, that's just as bad for a baby as being put into inadequate substitute care. I think care. I'm paraphrasing here, but didn't, you're saying it's fine if you get someone else to, to care for the baby who can sort of demonstrate as much love and attention. Well... Are you going to get that from a childminder? Absolutely, that... you can, yes. You can, absolutely. but it's not necessarily well, easy. Well, what most parents say in surveys is that they'd rather it was a relative, and that indeed is the, the, you know, a relative or you know, a partner. What about the men doing it? You know, oh, well, who actually... cares about the men? <laughs> yeah, when no, are we ever going to no, look at these days? The men... That should be your next book, eh? Yeah, the men get more and more involved in it nowadays, but not as much as they should. Uh, but certainly, you know, that's what most, most parents prefer, is if they can have a friend or a relative. And then after that, the next best thing the science shows is a minder. And, you know, although about two-thirds of children who go into, into group daycare are probably not harmed by it at all, but I, I do present a lot of evidence in the book that daycare is the least good thing to do. Because basically, you know, an hour after being put into daycare, uh, say an 18-month-old, uh, has twice the levels of what's known as cortisol, the fight-flight hormone that you secrete when you're feeling threatened yeah. and frightened. Yeah. And uh, it's not good for you to have high cortisol. So really the government, the, the, the Labour government, made a big mistake in trying to, you know, jack up the amount of people putting, putting children into daycare. Okay. Much better to have minders. Tracy you you were um, the third of four... Children, is that I right? was, how, yeah. did, how did your mum cope looking after <laughs> you? How did she do? Well, uh, my mum was totally overwhelmed because she had four children under five, and so she was just swamped, and she just stuck me at the end of the garden to scream. Was she a working mum? No, no, she no. wasn't a working mum, no. But, I mean, uh, you know, argue, I, I mean, I don't think if she'd... Uh, that's one of the things I discussed at the beginning of the book, is would it have been better if she'd worked or not? Probably not, but what she needed was support. She needed other people to help her out, because four children under five, goodness knows, you know, it would make most people struggle. Hmm. But, but as a working mum, as long as you, you, you... If you yourself are fulfilled, surely you then have more to offer your child, as long as that child has a loving, nurturing environment and people that love and care for it... Exactly. ..and knows mummy and daddy are coming back. Yeah, and that's very much what I'm arguing is in, in the book, is that I give, you know, how to get comfortable in your skin. Well, I mean, I give one example of a woman who is one of the one-third of women who've always seen their work as just a way of earning money, not a career. A lot of women actually don't have an interest in being a career. They don't want to be, mm. a, you know, a chief. They're quite happy to be an Indian, and what they want to do is look after their children. And I, there's a great example of a woman who did that and who had a very difficult childhood herself. You know, she'd gone out with a lot of rotters. She'd got her act together. She'd thought about her own childhood. She'd worked out what was best for her, and she was very, very happy being a mother. On the other hand, another woman, high achiever, went to a, you know, girls' school, very... Uh, you know, girls to high school, went to Oxford, you know, commercial lawyer, very successful woman, but very much able to tune into her babies, you know, loved looking after them for maybe nine months or whatever, and then, you know, worked it out and could afford a nanny and basically thought, well, it's probably better than nanny's probably going to do it better than me. And that's great, because she okay. found a really good nanny and it works incredibly well. OK. Um... I just, I, I, we're running out of time. I mean, this is a great warm-up for, for the rest of the programme that's going to come, but there's one slightly uh, stupid question. I'm not crass, I don't know. I've got this uh, uh, 
album, Fleet Foxes is the name of the group, oh, yeah. and one of the tracks on it is called Oliver James, and <laughs> yeah. I just hear it constantly in my head, the chorus, Oliver James. It's not about you, though, is it? Uh, no, unfortunately, I, I think it's about a, an actor who oh. is rather less good-looking than me, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> But what I'm worrying about here is that you're, going to ask, that you're going to ask Craig about the book and he's going to hold up a thing saying, sorry, Oliver, one. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that, darling, not before reading it. I might do, I might do that, but are you still terminally, darling, addicted to nicotine? I am completely oh, addicted oh, to nicotine. And you're but, I, head but, I, but thank goodness I managed to uh, get addicted to lozenges, so I haven't smoked any cigarettes. Well apart from very occasionally, um, you know, for a very long time, because these lozenges are actually great. They're just like mints. I'm shocked yeah. and appalled. <laughs> but it probably is due to my early years. I mean, yeah. in all yeah. seriousness, I think, you know, because, you know, I was quite deprived as a baby in some ways, that does leave you, just change, yes, change your electrochemistry, you know, the way you're cared for very early on. And, of course, what most people don't know is that nicotine is the strongest antidepressant known to man. That's why we stay addicted, even after you've given up and all the nicotine's out of your system. The reason you crave a cigarette and the reason, if you have one, you feel so good is actually it's a fantastic antidepressant. Naughty step in the pack of the fags, darling. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think I better move on. Up. I better move on to the uh, menu uh, for today's show uh, before we skew Sorry. any further away. Right, here's what we've got lined up for you this morning.